math book with absolutely no math in it. It is geared for not only the pre-college students, but also the adults who seek to help their kids. Uh, my specialty is rocket science. I was a rocket scientist for near, nearly 10 years. I used mathematics and science to launch the space shuttle. And it was a great opportunity. And in that process of becoming a rocket scientist myself, I had to learn to overcome my own fears, both in mathematics as well as overcoming fears to be able to get to that path. And I share that in my new TED talk that is coming up in January 2014. And in the TEDx PCC talk, I uh, uh, show audience members how to reprogram your brain to overcome fear. And I'm very passionate about this because I see the next generation of kids out there who are looking for encouragement, but they need to know how to overcome fear to pursue those tasks. Olympia LaPointe joins us today here on the big broadcast. We've got uh, a, a great, great couple segments here with her. Um, tell us a little bit uh, about the book. We've got uh, Mathophobia in front of us here. Summarize the book in just a few sentences for us. Great. Uh, Mathophobia is a book that helps people who have a severe fear of mathematics to overcome their fear. The book is laid out in three sections. The first um, chapter talks about my own personal experience, how I failed algebra, failed geometry, chemistry, and made a D in calculus, and that process it took me to overcome that fear. And also in the first chapter, I share about my own experience of becoming a rocket scientist and what that looked like and how that process was in doing that. The second chapter deals specifically with how to uh, use math in real life, math and science, and I talk about my time in the mission control room and launching rockets. Now, the rest of the part of the book is actually quite fascinating in itself as well. Uh, the third chapter deals with uh, understanding which mathophobia you have. There's four types of mathophobia, and what mathophobia is, it's a severe fear that happens in the reptilian part of the brain that shuts off the frontal brain flow rendering somebody paralyzed when it comes to problem solving, specifically mathematics and science. And when mathophobia is present, the frontal brain lobes are completely turned off so someone can't at all solve problems or even calculate. And when someone knows what their mathophobia is, now they're armed with the information to then turn it off. There's four types of mathophobia. The first type is Quincy the quitter. He'll quit before he even tries. It's Donna the overdoer is the second. She will try and try and still miss the mark. There is Samuel the struggler who is really brilliant but doesn't know, necessarily know how to communicate his thoughts to the next person. And the last person is Crystal the criticizer. She'll point fingers at everyone because she doesn't know how to become a beginner again. And in my book, I show the three main steps to transform each one of these mathophobia personalities into problem-solving personalities. Quincy the Quitter becomes David the Determined. Uh, Donna the Overdoer becomes Sarah the Strategist. Samuel the Struggler becomes Ivan the Innovator. And lastly, Crystal the Criticizer becomes Ellen the Explorer. Yeah. And I'm really excited because in the book as well, um, I identify that people learn mathematics and science differently based on their Myers-Briggs thinking pattern. For example, if someone has an NF personality, which is a uh, intuitive feeling personality. That person does well with having a relationship with the teacher in regular tutoring environments or relationship with the rest of the students with in, uh, studying in study groups, uh, opposed to, let's say, an SJ personality, which is a sensing and judging individual uh, who would best understand math and science by requiring the steps from the teacher and the tutor rather than trying to see the overall process. So I'm really happy about the book. The book has been endorsed by U.S. Ro uh, US astronaut Robert Kerbeam, so I'm excited about that. And it has been endorsed by a uh, Ph.D. psychologist and um, Ph.D. engineers. And I am just so honored to be able to share this information. The book is also available uh, through college bookstores. It's available online, and it has recently been endorsed by the Girl Scouts of Greater Los Angeles. So I'm excited that we're getting this information out there. 
It's Olympia LaPointe with us today here on the program uh, talking about Mathophobia, which is a uh, tremendous, tremendous book. Um, uh, why do you think that this book will appeal to readers? This book will definitely appeal to readers because surprisingly, 9 out of 10 Americans struggle with mathematics education. And this is just so surprising. At, when I do my talks and I speak at different college campuses and at schools, it is surprising that most of the people that come to me telling me that they have had major issues in mathematics are the parents. The parents are needing help and needing to be empowered to be able to help their own kids in math and science. But, however, if their own background within the science and mathematics struggles, at, they, they struggle at it, they feel just discouraged with trying to help their child when they need help too. And so in my book, I share about the, the processes and the steps that parents can take to, a, to not only overcome their own mathophobia, but help their kids understand, mathopho un understand what mathophobia is, as well as arm them to think differently by reprogramming their brain. And in the book, I share about how to reprogram the brain so that the brain no longer accepts faulty messages of performance and so that the frontal brain now is turned on by reprogramming the brain with thoughts as well as actions that create new neuron transmitters that grow the frontal brain lobes. It's Olympia LaPointe. The book is Mathophobia. She's with us today talking about this incredible read. Who do you envision to be the potential readers of this book? Uh, well, that is such a great question that you ask. Well, originally, I thought the book was simply going to be for pre-college students. That's what I originally anticipated, and I created this book in, in mind. I wanted this book to be in the hands of every single person from eight years up to, I say, 17, who wanted to understand mathematics and science. And so that was the original target. But I wrote it in a way that would stimulate the brain of the young individuals to the level of the adults, how the adults would read it. Because I believe that a reader is very important. A reader is somebody who is taking the initiative to learn and grow themselves in a way that they have, haven't before. And so I specifically wrote the book to engage the young readers to be able to think critically as adults would. But I'm just really surprised to find out that the books are flying off the shelves with parents. I am just completely surprised because the most of the people who are purchasing the books are people in their 40s and 50s purchasing it for themselves and all of their family members. And it was such a great surprise to see that happening as well as to see college students across uh, the different places here in Southern California have buy these book and, and have it fly off the shelves. It was such an encouragement to see that the, this book is needed and enjoyed by not only the pre-college students, but it's enjoyed by adults and parents alike. Olympia LaPointe joins us today here on the program. And uh, we're going to take a quick time out here with Olympia when we come back. We will continue to chat here about mathophobia. Uh, Olympia, before we uh, go to break, how do we uh, find you online? Uh, you can find me on Facebook, facebook.com slash Olympia LaPointe. Also, you can find me at OlympiaLaPointe.com. We'll be back in a few moments here on The Big Broadcast. Crowdfunding is the practice of funding a project or venture by raising many small amounts of money from a large number of people, typically via the Internet. Musicians, filmmakers, and artists have successfully raised funds and fostered awareness through crowdfunding. Now you can raise money for your professional or personal project, idea, charity, invention, or business. Crowdfunding success is yours with our complete system, resources, and support. Most fundraising projects fall far short of reaching their financial goals. We're here to help you every step of the way to get you the money you need. Our team has the talent to guide, design, promote, market, and host your crowdfunding campaign. 
We'll help your campaign be seen and heard by millions of people, giving you the best chances of success to reach your funding goal. It's just $5 to get started with your crowdfunding campaign. Whether you're a nonprofit organization, wanting to start or expand a business, have an idea or invention, are a musician, artist, author, or filmmaker, have a friend or charity you want to raise money for, crowdfunding success can be yours with our system. Order our crowdfunding success gigs today exclusively at Fiverr.com. Is it time to find a job where you can work from home? Would you like to stop your commute to work every day? Are you tired of the same old daily grind? Would you like an honest list of work from home jobs from companies you trust? Then you need to check out the ebook Killer Work From Home Jobs, 460 Job Superbook. That's 460 work from home jobs from companies you already know. And I theft security system. Some are noisy with horns, others are silent and only produce a crank and no start making it almost impossible for a vehicle to be driven away by someone who shouldn't be behind the wheel. Watch the instrument panel when turning the key. Before turning on the engine, check out the lights. Some icons are the symbol of a key, while others spell out the word security. And don't forget to remind your insurance agent about the security system discount. Every penny counts. This has been your Car Care for the Clueless Minute for today. Let me teach you how not to fix your vehicle in the driveway, but how to have your car or truck properly repaired by an ASC certified technician like myself, Pam Oaks. It's all about making you a savvy car consumer. Now, the Jiggy Jaguar Show on JiggyJaguar.com. Welcome back to the program. Olympia LaPointe joins us here on the program. You can get more information on what we are up to over there on Twitter at J-I-G-G-Y-J-H-E-U-A-R, or you can find us at JiggyJagwire.com. Olympia LaPointe is back with us. Mathophobia is the book. And um, is there a particular chapter you'd like to share with our listeners from the book Mathophobia? Oh, great. Yes. Um, there is a particular chapter. I'd like to share from the book Mathophobia, and um, it's actually the first chapter, and it sets the stage of uh, Mathophobia, and um, let me pull it out for you, and it's the first chapter is uh, chapter one, I'm a rocket scientist, is it, do you think it takes a genius to be a rocket scientist? The answer is no. I will share with you a secret. There is a self-empowering process that enables anyone to become brilliant in math and science. Trust me, becoming a rocket scientist has almost nothing to do with math and science itself. I would have never imagined myself as a rocket scientist. My background was the farthest away from procedure. In fact, I would argue that my development was extremely dysfunctional. However, I was given the talent to imagine. I call it faith. If I could become a rocket scientist given such early dysfunction, I am convinced that anyone can use her skills and talents to achieve her desired heart. Of course, boys can succeed too. My motto is, when given lemons, make lemon meringue pie. Here's a better illustration about my great mathematician preparation. Picture this scenario. My childhood was the 100% complete opposite from rocket science performance. I was never on the Ivy League educational track, and yet I became a rocket scientist. I was raised in South Los Angeles, California, with three sisters in a financially and emotionally depressed inner city neighborhood. Sadly, many of today's early learners are conditioned to have dysfunctional thoughts. Throughout the day, little ones are exposed to inappropriate behaviors exhibited through movies, TV, discouraging teachers, poor schools, unsafe neighborhoods, and even unsafe environments at home. I'm no exception to these unfortunate circumstances. My mother was a single parent who struggled to pay the bills. Between the factors of poverty, gang violence, and educational ignorance, I was bombarded with anxiety from every angle. As a kid, I was safe while caged between the four walls of home. Once I exited my house, I was surrounded by gangs and gang violence. I was raised on 55th Street between Hoover and Vermont, which was highly gang-infested during the 1980s. I remember the unspoken curfew on Fridays, where everyone had to be inside by noon. If you were caught outside, male or female, despite nationality, wearing the wrong colors or shoes, you would be shot dead. 
Fridays were destined for, for uh, designated for weekly gang initiations. We slept. We even slept a certain way in the bed at night to ensure that bullets would miss our heads if they penetrated the wall. I also worried whether we had enough food for us as a family to survive. My mother always said, the only way to get out of poverty is through an education. So I didn't want to let myself or my mother down by not earning a bachelor's degree. My number one goal was to make it out of the hood. While growing up, my family had a lemon tree in the backyard of our home. A plethora of sour fruit fell from the tree. Even though our sour lemons filled the yard, I managed to make lemonade. Thanks to timing and the right directions, I graduated to making linen meringue pies. All the time, my childhood was equivalent to a bucket of sour experiences. Fortunately, with time, I learned to make a great dessert from the lemons I received. Would you believe that I used math to make these pies? So that's like the first uh, two pages of the book. We've got Olympia LaPointe with us today here on the big program talking about Mathophobia, which is her latest book. Um, what makes your book different from others like it? The, there's great books out there. Uh, there's great books out there that uh, deal with teaching people about mathematics. But this book is unique for three reasons. One... This book deals with the root cause of math illiteracy, which is the fear of mathematics, mathophobia. People knew it exists, but never had it been coined and named. I am the first person to name this fear and specifically describe what happens in the brain when this fear is present. No other books out there explicitly describe mathophobia nor show how it can be removed. The second reason why this book is so different than the rest of the books there is that there's a face on the math book. If you go to every single book on the, on the shelves in the math and science section, you do not see a face on the book. They're very uh, sterile type of books that do not engage readers, especially not the young readers. So I have chosen to be the face of mathematics and science in STEM fields, specifically science, technology, engineering, and mathematics here in the United States. And I have decided to place my face on books and products to engage people into the science arena. People think of science as this untouchable, massive thing that people can either get or they'll fail. And it's really, truthfully, engaging. And so this book engages people, and it invites not only the youth, but people who have a fascination about science into reading and understanding more about it through my stories of rocket science that I share in the book. And the last reason why this book is just so different is that it's written for any age. It's not just a math book for college students. It is a book for adults. It is a book for kids because it deals with empowerment and it deals with overcoming fear. When we can overcome fear, we can do anything we set our minds to in life. And for me, I became a rocket scientist. We've got a great guest with us today. Olympia LaPointe joins us. Mathophobia is the latest book. And before we let you go, how do we connect with you online? You can find me at my website, olympialapointe.com. And also, you can follow me on Facebook and see great, just great tips and photos at facebook.com slash Olympia LaPointe. Well, Olympia, thanks for being with us today. Really appreciate the time. And, it has been uh, my pleasure. Thank you. We will, we will talk to you very soon. Thanks for being with us. Sounds good. Appreciate it. Crowdfunding is the practice of funding a project or venture by raising many small amounts of money from a large number of people, typically via the internet.